Hey Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. In this video today we're going to discuss five huge mistakes that we see players do in regards to improving. A lot of players tell us that they try so hard to get better. They think that they have the right mindset and practice pretty often but they still can't find the results that they want. That's why we are here to talk about some of the things that are probably holding you guys back. Our analysts have compiled the biggest issues holding everybody back from improving who's in the lower elos. And today's question of the day comes from us asking what are some of the things that you guys do to detilt yourself? Whenever I end up playing on a lost streak, I really like to take a break and hit the gym or read something, maybe watch some YouTube videos, just distance myself a little bit from the game and from specifically my computer desk. Are you getting ganked in your own lane, constantly demolished? Well, don't worry, because we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Nightblue, Bunny Fufu, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now, and let's get started with the video. The first thing that might be holding you back and probably one of the most important things to understand not only in this game but also in life is understanding what results oriented thinking is. Whenever you might make a sick play and get that double kill outplay, you might think it was perfect. Whenever your team ends up dying because you didn't group with them, they were just bad or that was just a bad play. And this is the mindset that many of us are guilty of adopting because, well, it's easy. You can look at the result and easily assess based off of whether or not you did something good or bad. After all, think about it. If you ended up winning the game, it's easy to assume that you played well and the opposite if you lose one. It's pretty easy to say, oh, well, this thing happened and this is what happens. This is just what happens if I play this champion. This is what happens when I play this game. However, something every player needs to be able to do is separate the result from the actions that led to it. Let's retrain our thoughts and think back to those first two examples. What if the only reason that you got that double kill was because one of your opponents forgot that they had their flash up? What about that time when you made that mistake and you didn't group with your team, but the enemy marksman already had three items finished and the rest of their team was built around protecting them? It's one thing to walk away from the first scenario thinking that you played like a god, but it's another to recognize that you got kinda lucky. The second case is a bit harder because it takes more general knowledge and ability to judge an entire scenario than simply saying, oh, well, regardless of what happens, you just didn't do the right thing. You have to think about this this way because you need to do this in order to get good at the game. We've established that results-oriented thinking is bad, so what's the correct way to think about things? Well, there's kind of two mindsets. Number one is goal-oriented thinking, and the other is objective-based thinking. By replacing results-oriented thinking with one or even both of these, you will without a doubt see some improvement. Objective-based thinking is the ability to simply assess a scenario without thinking about the result. You have to pinpoint the thought process, the logic, and understand the why of a result. Will something work only if a criteria is met? Did a play fail because of your own mechanical mistakes, or was it just the wrong decision altogether to do this? When you are able to do this, you're 90% of the way to improving because the last 10% is just going to be about remembering and learning from past experiences. If you come into a similar situation later on and you've already objectively analyzed that situation in the past, it's pretty easy. Just act upon what you learned in that self-reflection. Just as a bit of a side note here, I just want to say, this probably is the biggest thing that I've noticed throughout the years, from my own improvement, to talking to friends, to talking to people on a daily basis that just aren't getting the game. They're stuck in their own rank and specifically stuck in lower elo. This is the biggest thing. I hear this all the time, and really it comes down to their approach and the way that they talk about themselves. They say, oh, I could have mechanically outplayed that. Oh, well, if I just had Flash there, she was dead, she got lucky. Well, think about it for a second. If you went in and did something, and you died, and it required you to mechanically outplay something so perfectly, then that was a risky play, and maybe you shouldn't have done it. For the second part, if the play required you to have your flash, if it would not have worked if you did not have flash, then you shouldn't have done it if you don't have flash. The other way to think is about your goals, and it's another mindset that's really important. If you go into every fight only caring about whether you win or lose, and you go into every game on Summoner's Rift only caring about victory screens, then you missed out on a lot. When you tunnel vision and you fixate your focus completely on the short-term gains, you deprive yourself of the bigger picture. 
Your goal going into games shouldn't be about winning. You could start tunnel visioning and making suboptimal choices just because you're so focused on winning that instead you kind of throw the game. What you should be doing is setting goals in the short term and thinking about the long term. You should go into your next game and say, okay, I either want to get better at farming, I want to have more presence on the map, or I want to die less. And if you do this and you set the goals in the short term, your big long term goals will come naturally and more wins will come naturally too because you've ended up becoming a better player in the process. This game and learning such a popular MOBA like this is a marathon, it's not a race, and you cannot expect yourself to become a challenger player after every single game. The math just isn't on your side. There's what, 100 million people worldwide that play this game, and there can only be 200 challenger players per region, something like that. So the math's not on your side. Chances are, in order to be top 200 in your region of millions and millions of players, you really have to be pretty darn good compared to the competition. The next thing we want to talk about is something that a lot of players tend to overemphasize, but it's still admittedly quite important, and that is your mechanics are subpar. Listen, no matter which challenger player that you look at, whether you're talking about in comparison to other pro players or other challenger players that you think are better than them, you're not going to see any challenger players with truly bad mechanics. Outside of the elite bracket that these players play in, most of us could dream to make a comment like that. And even the lowest challenger level players have, at worst, pretty good mechanics. Time and time again, you'll hear advice about how League is more focused on thought process and decision making. And this is absolutely true. We don't want to stray you in the wrong direction. However, you need to have a baseline level of mechanics to act on a lot of these decisions. The difference between you and a challenger player is that a high elo player might be able to immediately assess a 2v2 bot lane skirmish is worth going for and know every possible outcome and how to reach it, but he can only reach those possibilities if they're mechanically capable of executing that play. It's very true that Kiana and Aurelian Soul are macro-based champions that do great in the roam game and they can move all over the map and have so much map pressure, but if you run bot lane, mess up your combo, mess up something mechanically, give them a double kill and feed bot lane, then you're still making the wrong play even if it was the right idea. Logically, this is an easy fix, because if you don't think your mechanics are great or where you want them to be, the reasonable solution is just to practice. What this looks like in practice is focusing on your mechanics in normal games, ranked games, as well as some in the practice tool. Especially when your games don't matter too much like during the preseason or in normals, this is also a great time to limit test. Go for those fights that you'd normally be a little bit more afraid of and push yourself to the limit in order to win them in spite of the odds. If you're really fed and you get a lot of kills, see how much damage you can do and get a feel of what your capabilities are. Learning stuff like this really helps you understand champion strength and also gives you a chance to practice your mechanics. In every game, just keep mechanics in the back of your head as something you want to slowly improve on because every game is an opportunity to practice. That being said, for the final time, don't take it the wrong way, because you do hear it a lot that a lot of players say my mechanics are so good, but I have horrible macro. It's not really the case, okay? Your mechanics are just probably not as good as you think they are. Our next point is going to be about champion mastery. And no, we're not talking about flashing that mastery seven emote and flexing on your opponents, but hey, that can definitely be a fun part of the game. There are many players in League of Legends that try to emulate the pros, and that's not a bad thing. However, when you're trying to play 5, 6, or even more champions at a professional level while you're still stuck in gold, you might be spreading yourself a little bit too thin. There are two major parts to this game, mechanics and the micro side, and the decision making or the macro side of things. If you are spending all your time learning several champions, you will be heavily deficient on the macro component of the game since all your focus is going into something else, which is the micro mechanics of each champion that you play. The reason why so many one tricks and players who narrow down their champion pool find success is because playing their champion is simply second nature for them. Just like how writing down notes is easy because we're comfortable with an alphabetic system, playing League of Legends is easier when using your tool, aka your champion, and it comes naturally to the champions that really are utilized a lot. You can then focus on the more important things like what you need to do on the map, how do you need to win team fights, and where you need to be while all the other stuff comes naturally to you, like which laning phase is bad or good for you, how to farm effectively on the champion. Another reason this is crucial is that the specialization is much more important up until a certain point. Even if you're in an unfavorable matchup, you won't get abused to the maximum extent if you can play your champion better than the enemy can play their champion. 
One Tricks can even catch out professional players by surprise by cheesing them since they're more knowledgeable about specific matchups and specific power spikes. For the vast majority of players, they will find more value out of mastering a champion than first timing a counterpick. Now, if you're a high-low player who is comfortable on counterpicking a matchup because of experience and practice, that's a little bit different. But until then, you're still best at improving and hitting the skill ceiling on a couple of different champions that you enjoy playing, rather than spreading yourself so thin and saying that you can play everything. Fourth, we want to talk about reviewing games and learning from mistakes. We brushed over this when we talked about mindset at the beginning of the video, but mindset does not mean that much if you aren't reviewing or learning from your games. The whole point of a goal-oriented or objective mindset is so that you can be open-minded enough to learn from your own mistakes. When your biggest goal is to improve, you have to be able to forgive yourself for mistakes and be willing to look at not only the good stuff, but the bad and the ugly as well. While our analysts do have some disagreements here and there over reviewing your games, the bottom line is that you have to learn from your mistakes. When you die, you need to ask yourself why that happened and think about it as objectively as you can. Everything matters. Everything is a sequence. If you took a hit that killed you and the final hit that executed you lost you the 1v1, you have to think back to those trades that you took a couple minutes ago. Maybe in some cases you are going to be a quick learner who can make mental notes and tell yourself what is and what isn't correct, but to say that reviewing your games altogether is useless, that might be a bit cocky. Almost everyone can learn a thing or two if they watch their replays. One thing that we always hear a lot is that when players watch their replays, they don't know what mistakes they're looking for. You can then learn this stuff by watching professional games with casters, watching higher ELO players with commentary, or even by hiring a coach to walk you through it. At ProGuides.com, we have a ton of challenger coaches who are always there for you. Whether you want to learn a champion or learn how to review your games more effectively, you can hit them up on our website. With that said, we are all bound to make mistakes. Once you can identify those mistakes, you need to learn from them and not make them again. This might not happen in one game, but you might have it happen in the next game after that, every now and then, or even pretty often. It just depends. You may find that after reviewing a game and beating yourself up for a mistake that you made, you might see some mistakes again a couple of games later, so be conscious of this and don't hate yourself for it. Habits are a hard thing to build and even harder to break. You'll need to constantly remind yourself, take notes, or use sticky notes to help stick with it, and work through to forge some new habits that'll help you improve. Finally, we want to bring up the fundamentals. Listen, everybody has to know your ABCs while you write, which means that you need to know the fundamentals of the game to play League of Legends at a higher level. When you watch your favorite streamers, high-low players, or professional players, what do you see? Well, you probably see them having an easy time. It seems like they always play well, and they know what they're doing, and they make their champions seem super OP. What's easily overlooked, however, is that not every moment of practice and the buildup to this point in their play was always a highlight reel. A lot of it was simple stuff like practicing farming, applying game knowledge, studying their replays, and practicing other simple concepts over and over again. Stuff as elementary as farming and managing a minion wave might seem insignificant at first, but to pro players, it means everything. Great players recognize the importance of the little things that most players easily and rapidly overlook. We all tend to be so focused on being on some type of montage or being the next Faker. But have you ever wondered why Faker's so good? Have you ever wondered why Faker can 1v2 the jungler when he comes to gank his lane? Well, you just take a look at his CS. Faker always has item leads, level leads, experience leads, all these types of things. And that makes it much easier to actually 1v2 when the time comes. If you have 50 CS at 10 minutes, it's going to be way harder to 1v2 a gank than if you have 100 CS at 10 minutes. Like we mentioned earlier, mechanics play a big factor in League of Legends. However, I know without a doubt that a lot of players are way too obsessed with becoming a mechanical genius who continuously outplays their opponent. That's not what this game is about. The opportunities to make big plays will definitely come and definitely exist, but they should not be the main focus of the game. Some of the more popular videos you'll find about this game cover things as simple as minion wave management and how to farm. When you genuinely ask Hilo players for advice and how you can get better at the game, a lot of times they will answer something very generic, like learn to manage the waves better, don't die for free, and play OP champions. But no, you're not missing out on something. It's not some secret formula or some special genetic. These little things matter so much, and if you want to climb to the top, it's something that you have to accept as an absolute truth. The fundamentals matter, playing meta champions matter, and improvement matters. 
That concludes this episode of Challenger Tips. Thank you guys very much for watching and we always really appreciate the support that you guys give us. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel and ProGuides.com where you have so much content dedicated to help you guys level up your gameplay and push for your goals for season 10. Until next time, good luck on the Rift and I hope you guys are ready for next season, which is just around the corner. We know that we will be here.